For every shop job, there is a work drawing or blueprint which gives the machinist complete specifications and information. Such a drawing as this should not only make clear to you all the details of the finished piece, but should enable you to plan in advance the most efficient way to machine it. The drawing represents the finished piece. This rough casting should be enough oversized to allow for the necessary finishing operations. Not all blueprints are full scale or one to one. Here, however, the drawing is the same size as the finished piece and the rough casting is a little larger. When the piece is machined, it will conform exactly to the blueprint. To understand the cross-section view at the right, imagine that the finished workpiece has been cut in two along its center line. This is the line of the cross-section. That part of the drawing represents the finished piece as it would appear in such a view as this. The required outside diameter is eight inches as indicated by this dimension line. Remember that machining reduces the dimensions of the rough workpiece. In the case of cast iron, a roughing cut which gets under the scale and a finishing cut at least a sixty-fourth of an inch deep will normally require about an eighth of an inch for each surface to be finished. Hence, to produce a finished piece eight inches in diameter, the rough casting should measure about eight and one quarter inches. This workpiece allows sufficient stock for machining. Notice the F marks on the cross section view. They indicate that the face of the flange and the inside and outside faces of the hub are to be finished. The thickness of the flange is to be three quarters of an inch. Therefore, the flange of the rough casting should be seven-eighths of an inch thick to allow one-eighth for machining. The overall thickness of the piece is to be one and seven-eighths inches. Since this dimension includes two finished surfaces, the overall size of the rough casting should be at least two and one-eighth inches. The finished inside diameter is four and two hundred fifty thousandths, or four and one quarter inches. The inside diameter of the hub in the casting should therefore be at least a quarter inch smaller, four inches or less, to allow for the roughing and finishing cuts. Notice that no finish is required on the recess in the face of the flange. It is already the size in the casting, but both the outside and inside faces of the hub are marked for finishing. The finished depth is to be one and one-eighth inches. Since finishing will remove the same amount from both of these surfaces, the hub of the rough casting should be of the same depth, one and one-eighth inches. Careful study of both the workpiece and the blueprint is essential to good planning of the job. In planning this job, Reference surfaces must be established for machining the three concentric surfaces and the three flat parallel surfaces. Finishing the large diameter of the flange first will provide the most satisfactory reference for the concentric surfaces and the large face of the flange a convenient reference for the group of flat parallel surfaces. The remaining surfaces will then be finished in the following order, the drilled hole, the hub face, the inside bore of the hub, the inner face of the hub, and finally the reamed hole. The first operation is the rough turning of the outside diameter. 
Then the roughing cut on the face of the flange. Notice the tolerances specified in the blueprint. In this case, they are plus or minus 1 64th of an inch on all fractional dimensions, and plus or minus 5 thousandths of an inch on all decimal dimensions, unless otherwise specified. This means, for example, that the 8 inch diameter may be either a 64th inch less than 8 inches, or a 64th inch more than 8 inches. The finished diameter of the counterbore could vary from 4 inches and 248 thousandths to 4 inches and 252 thousandths. Tolerance, therefore, is the permitted variation from a specified size. Remember that the flange is to be 3 quarters of an inch thick and finished on only one side. Be sure that the finished facing cut machines the flange to that thickness. Try the calipers set at 8 inches to check the finishing cut on the outside diameter. This cut will complete the machining of the two reference surfaces. The blueprint specifies a hole 1 inch and 500 thousandths in diameter. It should be bored 5 thousandths under that size leaving a minimum of stock for reaming. With the piece reversed in the chuck, drill the hole. The other operations on this side are to face the hub, counterbore the hub, face its inside, and rough and finish bore the hole. With the same tool, face the hub, counterbore it, face its inside, and bore the hole. After finishing these surfaces, the hole is reamed, and its diameter checked. It is one inch and five hundred one thousandths. This meets blueprint specifications because it deviates only one thousand from the required size. Always make a final check of the work before removing it from the lathe to be sure that it meets specifications. The overall thickness measured from the reference surface is one and seven eighths inches as required. The hub bore is finished to a depth of one and one eighth inches as specified. Its diameter is four inches and 251 thousandths, which again is within the tolerance limits of plus or minus two thousandths. Remember that thorough study and accurate interpretation of the blueprint are essential to satisfactory performance on every job. The blueprint supplies you in technical language with complete information about the finished job. Check the rough workpiece with the blueprint dimensions to be sure that it is sufficiently oversized to allow for cleaning up and satisfactory machining. In studying the blueprint, Choose reference surfaces to be finished first, which will provide the easiest means of getting other surfaces concentric and parallel. Remember to maintain a constant check by measuring the result of every job operation to see that it conforms to the blueprint specification. Be sure that you understand what tolerances are permitted on each dimension, but do not relax standards of accuracy.
Never forget that intelligent study of the blueprint is your best assurance of doing your job efficiently.